Welcome to the Merle End. I'm Dominic Machado, and today I'm joined from the UAE, from Dubai specifically, by Estelle Vasudevan, who is not only Sri Lanka's favorite sports journalist, but a member of the BBC and our reporter on site at the T20 World Cup. Um, unfortunately, we're not coming to you under good circumstances. Sri Lanka have just lost um, the third match of their World Cup campaign, um, a 63-run loss, I believe, to India. It might have been more than that, but a significant loss to India, effectively ending Sri Lanka's chances, not effectively, actually ending Sri Lanka's chances of making it to the knockout round. Um, before we go ahead and get started, let's um, please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. Give us a follow, comment, ask us questions. We're recording this all stuff, all the stuff for you guys. So if you want more comment, co more uh, content coming, please like, subscribe, follow on whatever medium you're listening to us on. Um, subscribe to the newsletter. Estelle has been writing these great um, post-match reviews for us to dig into and kind of take away the key points from each uh, match. And uh, Nick Brooks has a great piece out on Kamindu Mendes that everyone should read. Okay, so, um, and last thing, if you have any mortgage needs in England, the UAE, in Saudi Arabia, let Mike Ward know that the Morally End has sent you to him. Info in the description below. Okay, so preliminaries out of the way. Let's talk a little bit about this third match. Um, Estelle, how are you feeling after the match? Because I think that, to me, was kind of the biggest... Uh, biggest takeaway. I felt really down after Sri Lanka lost that match. I think it's been about a year, 18 months of buildup where we've been getting really excited and we saw um, Sri Lanka's World Cup chances go down in flames. Yeah, it was really deflating, I thought. I mean, I think if you followed the Sri Lankan cricket team over the last, I mean, I mean, I have followed them since around 2015. You've seen a lot of losses, right? But yeah. this loss in particular just felt real deflating because you 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 thought that Sri Lanka would be competitive in this game, and the margin, by the way, was eighty two. So eighty two, a massive massive uh, yeah. loss for Sri Lanka, and basically at no point in that game did they look like they were in it. Right? I yeah. think the only point that you probably had a little bit of hope when just before the first ball of Sri Lanka's innings was bowled, when you thought, okay, yep. if Samari has a good day, Sri Lanka can chase this. Other than that, from ball number one, it was all India, right? So a uh, really deflating loss. I think the team is also taking it pretty hard. Some of the faces, Chamari in particular, walking off yep. um, after that dismissal, looked really upset, I thought. So... Um, not a good feeling to lose like that, I think, because of like the highs they've seen over the last two years. Yeah. And this gets to kind of a fundamental question. Um, how much do you think that feeling of disappointment that both of us have kind of voiced was something that we set for ourselves and, and, and something that we could have maybe, I don't want to say avoided, but, um, did we miss anything? Because I think a lot of us were looking at this as, okay, Sri Lanka are probably the third best team in their group. And if they play well, maybe they're in with a chance uh, at the knockout round. And then especially after seeing India lose um, to New Zealand, we all got really excited and thought, okay, there's definitely a chance for the knockout round. So Estelle, do you think we misread the signs leading up to this tournament that made us all think so positively? Or do you think it's just been kind of a subpar performance from a team that could perform much better? I think it's a little bit of both. I think it's natural to feel optimistic after that Asia Cup win, right? Because it wasn't just one game that Sri Lanka won. They, won, they yeah. beat Pakistan, they beat Bangladesh, they beat India. So the three best Asian teams, they beat them. And they beat them quite, uh, India at least, quite comprehensively yeah. so i don't think it's it's necessarily wrong to have been hopeful that sri lanka could have finished second or third in this group but i think we, we spoke about this um about how you know sri lanka could come away with four wins sorry three wins not four wins because i mean it's very hard to imagine us beating australia but yeah. um they could come away with three wins 
but they could also come away with four losses. I think we we discussed that in previous yeah. pods, right? Because it's not more than it being about Sri Lanka, you know, Sri Lanka's performance. The other teams are here to play as well, and they're strong teams. This group is a very tough group. You've got yeah. teams that you know can really put on a good show. I think if you look at Pakistan, for example, um, Sri Lanka did beat them in the Asia Cup. But they barely got over the line. And that's been yeah. the case when they've beaten them over the last couple of times, right? Where a game could have gone either way. Um, this time it went Pakistan's way. Um, with Australia, Sri Lanka have never beaten them. So it was always going to be a massive challenge. And just the just seeing the way Australia has turned up so far, I think probably the only way you're knocking them out is in the semifinals or the finals. There's no other way they lose, right? Um, with India again, on paper, a really strong team, right? And no one's, yep. no one was expecting them to lose to New Zealand. So I think it's fair that Sri Lanka, Sri Lankan fans were hopeful. And I think it's not just Sri Lankan fans. A lot of people were talking about Sri Lanka as one of the forces in this tournament or underdogs, right? But yep. I, I also think that you have to be conscious of the fact that they did have to play qualifiers to get in, right? So they are seeded basically as one of the two lowest uh, teams yeah. in the tournament um, on 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 being optimistic and realistic I think it's good to also understand that like I think what a lot of people miss is that the other teams are here to play as well it's yeah. not like they're going to turn up and just roll over for Sri Lanka right yeah. and and I, I think that's especially true for the game against New Zealand which is coming up because they have a chance of making it through the semifinals when everybody had written them off, right? Yeah. So they're not going to just, you know, give a game over to Sri Lanka. And neither India. India is, I think if you look at those teams in, in Sri Lanka's group, you've got Australia and India who are well-rounded teams. They've got yeah. a lot of players who can win them matches. And you, you've you seen that in the tournament, right? New Zealand, Sri Lanka, reliant on a few players. We have to yeah. admit that, right? Even Pakistan to a degree. New Zealand won that game thanks to Sophie Devine, right? She has a good game. New Zealand will most likely have a good game. So I think there are a lot of factors. I don't think people were wrong to be optimistic. But realistically, I don't think you could have said, okay, Sri Lanka is going to lose every game. But there's always yeah. that possibility. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good assessment. I think the other thing that kind of tends towards this is a bad performance is one of the things that had really sort of taken this team into a constant competitor role has been the performance of the top three, right? Mm -hmm. They could expect runs from some combination of Vishmi, Chamri, and, and Harshita, and they haven't gotten any, right? And Vishmi and Harshita made massive strides this year. Chamri was playing brilliantly. And they just simply couldn't carry that form over. The reason for that, I mean, we can speculate all we want to, right? Whether it's a mentality question, whether it's teams working out plans that were effective against them, uh, we won't know. But if this team's top three failed, if you told us that at the beginning of the tournament, that they were not going to show up for those first three matches, then we would have predicted that it would have been very, very hard mm -hmm. to beat any of these teams. Um, and I think the one constant that that's kind of come up is the conditions, right? Mm -hmm. Because all of Sri Lanka's success over the last 18 months, I think have been in conditions that are different than this. Um, they haven't really played many games in these circumstances, even at home where you might expect them to get pitches that are slow and low. Um, they've generally been preparing good pitches where, um, run scoring is possible, right? Where you can chase 170, which I think is good overall for skill development of these players. But right now we've got big boundaries. We've got slow sort of grippy pitches. Um, what do you make of the impact of the conditions on Sri Lanka's sort of failed campaign? I think particularly in the first two games, it's a massive, a massive factor, right? To consider, um, they just could not adapt to the conditions. I think that's the biggest factor. I don't think you can blame it on 
the pitches because when you're playing international cricket you have to be able to adapt and as shamari said so rightly in the press conference before this game if other other teams are adapting we should be able to as well right none of these teams have played in the uae so them if if those teams are making it work sri lanka has to yeah. find a way to do it as well there's no excuse uh, saying look we played in batting friendly conditions therefore in conditions like this it, we're finding it difficult right um it, it's about i think the most important thing is being able to adapt quickly because in a tournament like this you don't have room for slip ups right and that yeah. first game was the big slip up against pakistan if sri lanka had pulled that through they probably would have lost to australia anyway right but they would have come into this india game thinking okay look we were banking on coming into this game with one win and one loss anyway right, right? um right. so so those those things i think you have to give credit to the other team as well i thought pakistan were you know they played their best cricket that day they bowled yep. really well uh fatima sana got runs when it mattered and really really important runs down the order um and sri lanka just you know didn't adapt i thought they were bit they were in a bit of like autopilot mode almost in in, in today's game again the, these are much better batting conditions right and the outfield was much quicker so i think overall if if i look at even the interactions with the media although although conditions have been discussed i think there is there isn't a sense of it being an excuse because like i said Yeah. Chamari has said repeatedly like if if Laura Woolward and Tasmin Brits can get runs Sophie Divine can get runs then Sri Lankan players also should be getting runs yeah. right because they are all facing the same situation so i think there's a lot of lot of room for improvement and a, and a lot of learnings to do and i think we discussed this in the previous part with Mark as well in that you know this is a young team um yeah and they're going to face a lot of challenges in the future right and we talk about how modern cricket is moving towards more you know flat tracks and and you know lots of runs but in fact if you look at the last two world cups the men's and the women's this year you've not had high scoring tournaments right yeah. you've had really yeah. difficult conditions to bat so i wonder if that then starts becoming kind of something that you have to consider when you when you go into a tournament you're not you're not you're yeah. not going to get you know these roads and you know where scores of 170 180 are par um actually rumesh ratnayak mentioned it as well right like you can't go into a tournament expecting um expecting the uh, a certain thing to come out of it right yeah. you have to go in there knowing that you will have to adapt to the condition so um yeah uh, conditions have not been gr- i think as an advertisement for the sport mm. conditions have not been great but it's not an excuse for the way sri lanka have performed they haven't they haven't been able to skillfully deal with the conditions yeah and you could tell that they showed up today with a different plan right uh mm-hmm. vishmi gunaratna from the first ball of her inning. I mean, it was only two in two balls long, but she was thinking, okay, I'm going to come down the wicket and I'm going to play aerially, right? And use that to kind of hit into these big gaps and big pockets and run twos, right? Um and we saw this from Anushka Sanjeevani and mm-hmm. and Sabisha Dilhari, right? A lot more play across the line, a lot more play of like shots in the air to try to get runs in value that way. So they tried to adjust that certainly is the case to say that they didn't try to adjust would be kind of um wrong headed i think the other thing is of course we're paying a lot of attention to their batting because we kind of expect that top 3 to provide mm-hmm. the bulk of runs but um there was something a bit lacking in the bowling today i think um those first 10 overs they more or less let india get out, out get out of the gate without any struggle and i think um you know when you bring up conditions one of the things that's true about conditions is both teams have to face them kind of mm-hmm. like you said right teams are going to show up to this tournament if the conditions are not good for batting for you they're not good for batting for other teams as well so what was your impression of 
Sri Lanka's approach to their bowling innings today. Um, they brought in Alma Kanchana for, for Hassani Pereira. What did you think they were lacking in? What do you think they, they tried to do but failed at doing? I think, first of all, Alma Kanchana was a, he turned out to be a really good inclusion, yeah. didn't she? She looked very confident with the bat. And with the ball, I thought she used the pace really well which mm. was not something we saw early. See, that's the thing, right? When you say slow and low pitches, you think only spinners are going to be successful. I think apart from one that one over where Hartman Preet took her for two or three boundaries, yeah. she was very good and difficult to get away. Uh, but they didn't use her in the first 10 overs. Um, I think you're right about the bowling. They were very good in the first two games, I thought. But they just didn't. They lacked bite, I thought. Like, they didn't create any opportunities, right? There were no plays and misses. There were no LBW shouts. There were no uh, balls that, like, kind of went in the air and, you know, landed yeah. safely or anything in that early part of the innings. So they weren't able to really create any chances. I know there was a lot of discussion on commentary about allowing the easy singles and stuff. But that's a tact. I thought that is a tactic where... Uh, they have the, I think, mid-wicket out and someone yeah. either at mid-off or mid-on or out on the boundary. That is a tactic Sri Lanka have used successfully against Priti Mantana and Shafali yeah. Verma in the past, where they kind of frustrate them a little bit, not allow them boundaries through their, you know, usual boundary scoring areas right. and then kind of cheap away at the wickets. But it, they just couldn't produce that wicket-taking delivery or that, you know, delivery that creates a chance right yeah. and then when they did create chances later on we saw so many uh, chances go down so, which was really disappointing i thought and you would see the frustration in the players yeah. as well because this is something they work hard at right and what's what's disappointing to me is that like for example kavisha put down a catch of jimmy Rodriguez, right kavisha was brilliant on the field yeah. like the amount of i don't know if you notice it in the broadcast but just watching her from the grounds the amount of ground she covers right and how quick she is she easily would have saved four to five runs just getting yeah. to the ball quickly and getting the throw in quickly right so she was brilliant with her ground fielding but then when she puts that kind of catch down all of that like it doesn't mean anything yeah. anymore right because catches are what you need to take and i thought ironically the catch off the free hit was the only one that was taken right like yeah. in the deep um they, it was yeah it, they dropped karma preet as well right hmm. uh, before she got going right hmm. and i think that was that was the other issue is right like especially they take those two wickets yeah um you know finally and as you said the plan comes together and shafali varma gets kind of hmm. uh, frustrated and, and hits it up in the air right and she gets out but um then they had the ability to kind of get rid of Jemima Rodriguez and and um, and Harman Preet, but they dropped the catches, right? Yeah, and, and, and that because was really the chance. Yeah, you have to understand also that realistically, like India is under more pressure than Sri Lanka, right? Yeah, because they're coming into this tournament as potential, like you know, contenders for the title. Sri Lanka Absolutely. here with. You know, maybe we finish third. Maybe we kind of challenge for a semifinals place. That's that's our highest bar, right? Semifinals was the highest we were ever going to go, of, like or what people thought was possible. Uh, but India is under a lot of pressure. They've lost to New Zealand. So if if they were able to pick up a couple of wickets, um, I think they could have really put that low middle order under pressure because they were always going to look going to look to go big with the net run rate, something they, yeah. they wanted to catch up on. Yeah, I think I think that's another interesting thing is that um, they allowed the Indian batters to kind of dictate mm -hmm. to the terms to them. And I think that's something that they might have done a bit more aggressively. Um, and especially as, you know, you kind of point out, batting first, figuring out conditions is, is something that you need to do. And... So maybe with, you know, sort of allowing Smithy Mandana and, and, mm. and Shafali singles is okay when you're playing in Dambola or something like that where, where 170 is par. But is it different when you're playing, you know, in a, in a pitch where um, 
the boundaries are massive. And mm-hmm. that was another interesting thing. So, so Estelle, I, I'm glad you brought up the fact that the ground feeling was generally quite good today, right? I thought they ran hard. They saved quite a few runs in the field. There was clearly a lot of effort. But um, when catching lets you down, it's one of those things that everyone says, oh, the fielding is rubbish. But that mm-hmm. only tells part of the story. It's yeah. the um, opportunities that were missed and even the run out, right? That was good ground mm-hmm. fielding that created that um, that opportunity. I think, uh, and as you said, one thing that Sri Lanka is going to have to figure out is how do they get more incisive with their bowling? How do they find wicket takers? I know, you know, Kavisha and Inoshi have been wicket taking bowlers, but um, it seemed like they were really trying to have to, I guess, the best way to say this is plan to take a wicket rather than mm-hmm. trust their skills to produce a wicket taking delivery, right? Um, you know, like when you look at the deliveries that got someone like Chamri out, right? Good delivery, taking the outside edge to slip. Right. I, I remember Inoka was on and they were bowling, you know, sort of uh, wide outside off stump trying mm-hmm. to get Pratimandana to play a shot that she didn't want to play. Right. It was trying to and, and every once in a while, that's fine. Right. To, to kind of set up a batter and say, OK, let's get them out by doing something, mm-hmm. you know, counterintuitive. But the good balls in the right areas were not being yeah. delivered there. Right. And that's what Ama did, I think, so well was using the pace, putting the balls in good areas and it paid off. And even Tamari in her little spell did really, really well for that. Um, so bowling, disappointing, fielding, disappointing, batting, disappointing. Um, I saw this tweet um, a few minutes ago and it it showed Tamari exiting the grounds and it mm-hmm. said, Heavy are the shoulders that carry the weight of expectations. Um, and this is just sort of on, it's not analysis. It's not It's not deep, insightful analysis. But I feel so gutted for Chamri, given how yeah. she's played over the last 18 months um, as, you know, one of the best batters in the world, how she has carried, motivated, and inspired these this team. Tell me what it looked like to see her walking off the field, um, both after she had gotten out and and after the match. I think I first, I have to go back to the press conference before the game. I felt like, you know, she really tried to take as much weight as possible onto her shoulders, which is, I mean, I don't know how I feel about that because there's only so much a player can take, right? As captain, Mm -hmm. as opener, you know, as a bowler in your side as well. But she also, I felt, was trying to protect everybody else and take that weight of responsibility of of getting the team off to a good start onto her shoulders and, you know, kind of saying that, you know, I'm going to do something tomorrow. I have to do something. You have to want, and I think this was brought up in the post-match press conference again with uh, Rumesh Ratnayak also, whether... At some point, you have to say, no, look, you don't have to take everything onto your shoulders. Yeah. This is a team sport and we we uh-huh. will share the burden, right? I think that's what really, I, I don't know, genuinely, when I was thinking about recording this, I was wondering, like, is the way I think or is the way we talk about these things, are we being too nice? Like, are, are we being not critical enough, right? Because... Yeah. Sri Lanka haven't done well. They haven't played well, right? But when yep. you look at what, what Ramesh Ratnayaka says and what Chamari says, like the effort is, like the will to do it and the effort is there, but yep. the execution is what's lacking. And I thought she looked close to tears when she was walking off. I felt yep. like she was yep. so frustrated. Um, even while fielding, she was quite frustrated, but that's something we always see, right? Um, yep. And... She just looked like, because yesterday she's, one thing, one, I thought, very eye-catching thing that she said was, tomorrow is a big game for me. I want to prove that I can take this pressure and I can I can get Sri Lanka over uh, this hurdle. That's what she said, right? Um, and then to, to, to have a performance like that, um, I'm sure she's got it. Look, 
if you are watching like it's not like players don't intend to be bad yeah but the effort is really there i mean we've been at i've been at nearly every training session right i've been to the warm up games the effort is there it's just like the execution is has deserted them in this series um and also yeah rumesh ratnayak was mentioning like but how maybe this has been something that they should have seen coming because he says that you know the intensity that sri lanka had during that asia cup kind of started mm-hmm. to wane during the ireland series but we didn't really think too much of it because shamar didn't play the t20s right yeah. so you thought okay yeah. i yeah. know series lost but sri lanka is not playing their best team so it's okay yeah right but i think it also goes to show that you know winning is a habit right and that maintaining that intensity is not easy over you know months and months yeah i'll i'll add two things in here i actually since the last world cup no team has played more t20 games than sri lanka has and so you know this is a team that's exhausted right mm. and second you know having any expectation at all having the weight of sort of a nation following you and supporting you is kind of new to this side right um it's only been in the last 6 months where the public has sort of started to sit up and pay attention and to you know give them the plaudits that they so richly deserved and what does it mean right coming into a a world cup as asia cup champions mm-hmm. as a team that's expected to challenge teams a team that's beaten three out of the four teams in their in their um side of the draw and beaten every single team on the other side of the draw right we're not talking about a team that doesn't have a resume behind it that's true underdogs um and i wonder if that backs against the wall no one believes in us mentality right was something that fired this team up um and and again right this team isn't deciding to say oh we're not going to execute right but at the other t- at the other end of it is maybe this is a reversion to the mean right mm-hmm. maybe we got some spectacular wins we had some spectacular successes and maybe the team isn't as good as we thought and it doesn't mean that they're not a good team but maybe instead of being the fourth fifth sixth best team they're really the seventh eighth or ninth best team and so mm-hmm. you're going to see some results that show themselves to be on the good side of that and some results that show themselves to be on the bad side of it and so it balances out in the end when you when you look at it um i think also form is a deceiving thing yeah. we always say okay the team that's in form is dangerous but form you know as they say right form is temporary class is permanent right so anyone can be in good form so i think mm-hmm. it's a lesson to all of us that form yes it does matter and playing well it does matter but sometimes you're going to run into good teams and those good teams have a good chance to beat you which is what has happened right and which you can realistically expect to happen and as you and mark had said right you could see anything between four losses and three wins right and this is a big variation in terms of outcomes and we've seen you know bad things happen it doesn't mean that they're a garbage team it doesn't mm-hmm. mean that everything before this was a fluke it just means that we're on the bad side of how they're performing right we've seen the good side of how they're performing and they've done it can they did that consistently but maybe they're not as good as all those wins potentially suggested yeah i think i think that's spot on right and what what you also have to remember is that you've got 10 teams in international cricket who play each other a lot right yep so the gap isn't i mean Australia so far I don't want to jinx them because as you guys know they're my number number 2 team but um they've shown themselves to be kind of a level above the teams they've faced so far right yep. I think if you if you realistically look at it on paper India Australia and England are, are um, basically you can't argue that they're to, they're not yep. top 3 right they are top 3 and but from that point onwards i feel like it's anybody's game yeah. one day sri lanka will be the fourth best team another yeah. day they'll lose to new zealand or south africa or pakistan yeah. or even bangladesh right sri lanka did yeah. lose to bangladesh at home um similarly you might have the odd game where they beat an england or an australia or yeah. a 
India, right? So that that I feel like from number four to number ten, it's it's a lot closer than you would think, and it's yeah. little things that can make a big difference, right? Yeah. Um, you know, a few things here and there. Like I mean, if you look at if you look at Sri Lanka's game against Pakistan, a few catches that you know needed a massive effort to be caught if they yeah. went straight to the fielder. Pakistan would have been bowled out for about 90, right? Yep. Little things like that can make a massive difference. And you have to also remember that in a World Cup, it's it's not always the best team that wins the tournament. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you look at if you look at the 2023 Cricket World Cup, I don't yep. think anyone will deny that India were the best team overall. Yeah. But Come the final, Australia were better on that yep. day and they won, right? So it's not about, it's not necessarily a way of finding out who the best teams are or ranking yep. the teams, but rather who's who's going to execute when the pressure is on, when it matters. Yep. And Sri Lanka have not been able to do that. And that's, that's I think, the point that people have to think about, right? It's... Yep. They they executed in in a pressure in pressure situations in the Asia Cup, and I think I don't think that was easy at all because they were playing in yeah. front of massive crowds. Um, it 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 was tough, right? But World Cup they haven't been able to do that. Yep. So it's also part of what sport is, right? I mean, yeah. I remember in twenty twenty, when Australia lost the first game of that tournament to India, everybody was like, okay, they're done. You know, they we yeah. thought they're gonna dominate. They done. They won the World Cup. Then they won yeah. in twenty twenty two. They won in twenty twenty three, right? So they've got yeah. three World Cups after that. So I think it's important to be not to overreact, also, yeah. but be realistic on what needs to change and what what needs to be improved on. But also yeah. understand that you know, while we progress, everyone else is not going to stay in the yeah. same place, right? Yeah. They're also going to progress in certain ways. I mean, this New Zealand team is not the New Zealand team that played in Sri Lanka. They look a completely different unit, yeah. right? So, I mean, you have to be critical and understand where things went wrong, but also be realistic and understand that, again, Sri Lanka had to play qualifiers to get into this tournament, which means, you know, they are not guaranteed a top four position. They have yeah. to fight for those for those uh for that success yeah i think um you know i always try to bracket this in my mind the difference between hope and expectation right as a fan i have hopes i can see if they play their best on this day they can beat Mm -hmm. x y and z team but realistically what do we expect right and i think what we've done here is kind of unpack how we can how we Mm -hmm. can kind of differentiate um that so Last question, uh, and we'll we'll have more discussion of the team after the final match on Saturday. What do you expect from the Sri Lanka side against New Zealand on Saturday? Um, effectively a dead rubber, potentially um, a certain star player's last game. I won't say who it is. Um, potentially many great <laughs> players' last match. Um, what do you expect from this side, Estelle? First of all, I would, I mean, I don't envy the job of the management right now, right? Picking a team up after that kind of performance and, you know, you know, they look, no matter how much you try to stay grounded, players themselves would have had expectations coming in, right? They would have thought they would at least have one one win under their belts by now and they don't. So it's a, it's a big game. I think it it has the potential to be very impactful in the tournament as well, right? Particularly for New Zealand and India. Um, I think they will, you know, come at it hard again. It's going to be in Sharjah, so it's it's probably not going to be a high scoring game. For for the team's sake, I hope that you know Chamari and you know some of the other players get some runs under their belts and you know go off on a high, right? And it. Yeah just to kind of so that it's not a complete waste or not a complete failure this campaign uh i would 
genuinely like to see Shashini Kimhani in the 11. Yeah, why I think not? She's, why not, right? I don't think there's anything to lose uh, because she's, I mean, Ramesh Ratnak has been working a lot with her in the nets yeah. um, just on her action and stuff, right? Trying to, trying to kind of fine tune things. So I would like to see her come in. Uh, I think yeah. Amar Kanchana was good. To be honest, if I look at positives, <laughs> Anushka Sanjeevani is one. I thought yeah. in this game and the last game, she looked by far the best batter for Sri Lanka. Yeah. I mean, today it was yeah. a stumping, but she just looked like she was in really good touch. Poor, yeah, yeah. And her she keeping looked, has been amazing. Yeah. I thought she was really, really good. I think, and I mentioned this before as well in the previous pod, because you wanted you wanted us to talk about it, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think she's one of the best keepers in the world right now. So her keeping yeah. has been great. Batting has been really good. She she's must be disappointed that she hasn't been able to kick on. Like even today, if she could yeah. have got like a forty or a fifty, and Sri Lanka could have got to like one twenty, one thirty, they would have at least gone back with that little bit of confidence in the batting lineup, right? Yeah. Um, I thought Kavisha was good with the bat as well. Yeah. Um, they've, yeah. They've had those little starts. Like I mean, um, Harshita was good in the last game. They've yeah. had those little kind of sparks, but they haven't been able to kick on. So I'd like yeah. to see, like I said, Shashini Gimhani come in potentially for any Nokarana Vira. Yeah. Um, and maybe, you know, they've got nothing to lose now, right? They, they can yeah, go. They can just go for it. Right? They can go for it because <laughs> losing four or losing three. It, it all comes down to a mindset as well, right? Yeah. Because if they go yeah. in there with all that baggage, we have to win this game. Otherwise, we're going yeah. going home without a win. It's it's going to affect them. And I think it has, to be honest. Um, yeah. I think it's not easy to come in. No, Like I said, no matter how much you tell yourself to be grounded, yeah, you're going to have some expectations coming into a tournament like this yeah. on that kind of high, right? And especially um, the way they've played, it's not mm, as if we're we're just imagining. Oh, they could be really good if mm, we've seen it, right? Mm, yeah. So I think I, I'm hope I I hope that they will go and put out a good show. Whatever happens, you mm, know, win, lose, or draw, I, I'm I'm hopeful that they'll go out fighting. I know Chamery will want to sign off the campaign mm, with with a big with a a big finish to show the rest of the world that she's still there, that she's still one of the best players in the world. And I think, you know, kind of your point, Estelle, just because Harshita and, and Vishmi haven't been as good as they've been, that doesn't mean there's not a lot of growth mm. in the future for them. Mm. That doesn't mean that they're not going to go on and do great things. It's a four-game sample, which is really, really small in yeah. the grand scheme of things. And if you look at it, they've proved themselves in 20 T20s. Yes. So you can't let four games mm. say that they're rubbish, right? That's not That's not how it works. Anyways, I know I, I'm down, as I said earlier, because I've been really rooting and trying to believe in this team that they were going to do something special. But we are with you till the bitter end. We will be there on Saturday. Estelle will be there on Saturday, and we will come to you after the game to talk about it, to talk about what's next for this Sri Lanka women's side. We've been the Morley End. Thank you for watching. And if you're still listening, give us a subscribe, a like, a follow on whatever platform. Thank you. Bye.